Alejandro's uh, prepared a delightful menu for us. Chilean sea bass, I believe. Uh, shall we? All adventurous guests, of course, can offer for our jungle river cruise all for a close-up look at our majestic... Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Benjamin... Oh, look at this. We got some free pie here. I have never been one to turn down free pie, especially when it's got so much delicious whipped cream on top. Gotta get some extra whipped cream. We'll get to cooking in a second because... Th oh, God! That's shaving cream. That is shaving cream. What kind of monster would do something like that? I don't know, but I definitely needed something to get that flavor out of my mouth. How about some Chilean sea bass? Which, as it turns out, is listed on the fake menu on the fake Jurassic Park website, so I can recreate it with some accuracy. First up, we gotta make some crispy sweet potatoes, which I'm going to put through a spiralizer, and then I'm gonna coat them in a cornstarch slurry out of cornstarch and water, which if you don't add enough water, it's fun to poke at. Nice science project for the kids. But we're gonna add a little bit more water, so it is, in fact, a slurry, into which we are going to deposit our sweet potatoes. Give them a little toss to coat, and then over on the stove I have some vegetable oil heated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna drop our potatoes in here, try to keep them separate. If you can, they're gonna stick together, but we can separate them later on, so don't worry too much about it. And then we're gonna let them fry for a solid three to five minutes until they're just starting to darken and they are nice and rigid and crispy, at which point we are evacuating them onto paper towels to drain. And then while they're nice and warm, this is your opportunity to get them separated and your opportunity to season them with kosher salt because when fried food is warm, that is when salt is going to best adhere. And then to distract ourselves from eating all these because they're really, really good, we're going to prepare our Chilean sea bass. John Hammond was not kidding when he said we spared no expense. You will be very lucky to find this stuff for less than $30 a pound. So we're going to very carefully trim it into equally sized fillets. Then we're going to prep the other elements on the plate. I'm going to parboil some green beans for about three minutes and then shock in an ice bath. Then I'm going to finally chop up a little bit of fresh rosemary and one small shallot and then slice in half a smattering of cherry tomatoes. Now, there are a few different ways you can cook Chilean sea bass. One of my favorites is sous vide, set at 125 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes to one hour, pat very, very dry, and drop into a ripping hot stainless steel skillet with a little bit of vegetable oil, flipping once golden brown. Basically, just treat it like a steak, but we're going to bring it up to a target temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. This is an absolutely amazing way to make fish, but we've got to get some really clean slices for this plating. And as you can see, this guy got pretty crumbly, so it becomes a snack for the chef. How about instead we try pan roasting. I'm going with a slightly thinner filet. I'm going to let that cook and not touch it until it is thoroughly browned on one side. A little bit of flame action just for fun, and it should lift right off the bottom of the pan. If your pan is probably preheated and super hot, you don't have to worry about it sticking. So now that it's flipped into a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven, it goes until it reaches 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the menu says that the fish is served with a lemon jus, so we're going to dab away some of the extra fat and make ourselves a little pan sauce. First, over medium heat, we're adding our shallot to the party, sauteing for about one minute before deglazing with some nice dry white wine and a little bit of chicken stock, maybe a half cup each. And then you guys know what comes next. We're scraping up all that fond courtesy of Tiny Whisk. Once we got all that good stuff off the bottom of the pot, we're going to add our finely chopped rosemary. And then we want to let this guy reduce by about half until it's nice and thick and syrupy. At this point, we're going to add a little bit of freshly chopped parsley and the juice of half a lemon. Stir this a little bit to combine. And then this becomes the perfect environment in which to reheat our chilled green beans. Season with a little bit of kosher salt, freshly ground pepper, let those flavors get to know each other, remove the green beans from the equation, and then it's time to finish our pan sauce with what else but butter. Kill the heat, add about two tablespoons, give it a tiny little whisk, make sure everybody's good and emulsified and thickened. You want this to coat the back of a spoon or slowly drizzle down the bottom of the pan. And now at long last, it's time to plate up. Let's start with a pool of our lemon choux. I should have made probably about twice as much, so just go ahead and double this recipe. And then using the sharpest knife we've got, we're going to cut our Chilean sea bass into strips for its extremely over-the-top 1990s plating. We're going to start by placing down the green beans and then opposing each green bean with a slice of Chilean sea bass, skin facing your right, my left. Then behind this whole affair, we've got some hard to justify but pretty to look at halved cherry tomatoes. And then on top between the two are crispy fried sweet potato straws. I thought this was weird at first, but white flaky fish like this is commonly served with sweet potatoes or other root vegetables. And not really a huge shocker here, this is totally delicious. The fish is crispy and moist, and it's a clear clean plate club member, unlike that Barbasol pie. I had earlier.